Hi, I'm Nick Walton and I'm coming to you from the RSC's prop department and I want to talk to you about Macbeth on stage. So, what was it like to watch a performance of Macbeth in Shakespeare's time? Well, it was probably quite a different experience to going to the theatre today. First of all, you wouldn't have been as comfortable. If you were well-to-do, you would have paid to sit in one of the two galleries on a wooden bench. But if you didn't want to spend much money, you would have stood to watch the whole of the play. About a thousand people crammed around the stage in an area called the pit. It was quite noisy, as some people were cracking and eating hazelnuts while drinking beer. It was pretty smelly too, as others were eating shellfish, the Shakespearean version of takeaway. Now, Shakespeare had been an actor himself, so he knew just what it was like to try and keep a rowdy audience entertained. Macbeth is structured like a thriller. It's filled with ghosts, witches, murders, apparitions, and lots of blood, all designed to keep an audience on the edge of their seats. The play had all of the dramatic ingredients to make it popular with audiences at the public playhouses. And it would also have appealed to King James when it was performed for him at court. King James had an interest in witchcraft. He'd been King of Scotland before becoming King of England, and he believed that he had an ancestor called Banquo. Like King Duncan, he had also narrowly escaped being killed and overthrown himself during the gunpowder plot of 1605. So some of the play's interests would have seemed very topical to him. Shakespeare clearly knew how to write plays that could appeal to anyone, from the farmer and the tailor mentioned in the Porter's speech to King James himself. Don't forget, the plays were performed in the afternoon in an open roof theater in natural daylight. Shakespeare's audiences could see each other and the actors could see all of them. Why is this important? Well, two reasons. First, it allows for a close and immediate relationship between actor and audience. When Macbeth speaks his mind in his asides and his soliloquies, it feels like he's sharing his most private thoughts, his secrets and his fears directly with you. Macbeth's ambition starts to burn after his first meeting with the Weird Sisters. He tells the audience that he does not want anyone to know his black and deep desires. Essentially, Macbeth shares more with you than he does with his partner in crime, Lady Macbeth, or his best friend, Banquo. The second reason it's important to remember that performances took place in the afternoon is because it helps explain some of Shakespeare's stagecraft and use of language. Two thirds of Macbeth is set at night time. So how was the audience supposed to know this when the performances took place in daylight? Well, the character's words make it clear that it's supposed to be dark. When you hear characters speaking about the stars or the moon or about sleep or about owls screaming, you're being reminded by Shakespeare that the scene is happening at night. Shakespeare's language is often poetic, but in terms of theater, it's also practical, functional, and very helpful. Imagination's always a very important tool in Shakespeare's theater. Shakespeare's spectators needed to imagine the nighttime darkness, the stormy weather, and various locations and settings. Shakespeare's stage did not have scenery in the way that we would think of it today. The action of the play moves from a heath to a castle, to a banquet chamber, to a bedroom, to a battlefield, from Scotland to England and back again, but the stage would have looked much the same from scene to scene. We shouldn't imagine though that the stage was completely bare. It would have been crucial for Shakespeare that a table and chairs were on stage when Banquo's ghost made his entrance in Act 3, Scene 4. The lords keep asking Macbeth to sit, but he tells them the table's full. Shakespeare's building up the tension, ready for the moment that Macbeth catches sight of Banquo's ghost, sat at one of the chairs, sharing his gory locks at him. The fact that Macbeth mentions his gory locks suggests that the actor playing Banquo had blood in his hair, a terrifying sight for Macbeth's heat-oppressed brain. 
Although the acting company did not use scenery as such, Shakespeare often made use of props to help create memorable dramatic stage pictures. Lady Macbeth makes her first entrance reading a letter, which informs her of her husband's encounter with the Weird Sisters. And later in the play, in Act Two, Scene Two, two bloody daggers serve as a visual reminder of the Macbeth's guilt and the horror of King Duncan's murder. I'm sure you'll already know that only men were permitted to act on the stage in Shakespeare's time. So imagination, language and costume all played an important part in presenting Shakespeare's female characters on stage. Costume was particularly important in helping Shakespeare's female characters come to life. More money was spent on clothes for costuming than on anything else for a performance. And the fashionable, elaborate dresses and wigs worn by the male actors would have helped create a strong sense of Lady Macduff and Lady Macbeth. I've mentioned a few things here that I think would have made watching Macbeth in Shakespeare's time quite different to watching it today. But I'm sure that you'll be able to think of a few more things, such as stage effects, music, acting styles, that would have been dramatically different as well.